remain to be that spirit that, that behind everything, in everything. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is going to be that head high priest that we follow. So the, the differentiation between the two, the form, Jesus, and then the, and then the kind of amorphous form, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand right where you're going, and, and it's difficult to explain. <laughs> it is difficult to put but, into but see, words sometimes. But that's why we need Jesus. See, we can't follow God just directly because it's this, we need Jesus because for us, He's the first fruits of many, meaning he's the, like you say, the new race, the 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 uh, you, you know this this uh, birth into Christ. At, we retain a kind of bodily, but we have a sort of structure. It's not mm-hmm. like we all just see the problem with new age thinking and with thinking about God and and just generalities is what are we all just going to become amorphous power? You know, we're all going to become the rocks and the trees and the stone, you know, the the air and the you know. Because God's in all those places. But no, the focus is on Christ, on Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that we'll be like him. In other words, we're not going to be that form. We're going to be this form like him. Yes. Who, who is not just an amorphous power out there. No, we will have a body. We will have a body. We will have a mind. We will know who we are. We will be individuals. The Bible clearly states that. He's going to give us an individual name that none knows but him. You know, we, we are individuals now. We're individuals that he's created, he's chosen. There, there's nothing in us that uh, God didn't want us to, to have, that he didn't choose, that he didn't put there. Yeah, and that's, but I mean, that's why without Jesus, no birth. There's no yes. birth, because you, you have to be born into something, and Jesus <laughs> is the only way to be born into something. Otherwise, sure, you could become the rocks and the trees and all that, but then when, when that happens, you are basically as if you never were as a as a individual person and they the 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 collectivist satanist um new agers whatever love and light people along with their um counterparts in the dark side they um they keep wanting to become like the trees and the rocks or familiar spirits and it's just like i can't believe you're missing this you, you, know? you know i would go beyond what you even said jeff i okay. would say without uh Without Jesus, without Yeshua, there's no life. No life. Not, Period. Absolutely. Not, not, not just no birth. There's just no life. No life Those at all. people are walking dead. They're zombies. There's nothing left. You know, once you get past a certain level, and, and I've heard you say this over again, you, you just, it, it's almost impossible to come out. It takes almost an act of God hmm. uh, to get the kind of contrition, for instance, like your grandfather had. That just doesn't happen to most people. Well, I saw a certain level. Most that that part of them inside has died. Yeah, it's been eaten alive. I saw him, you know, go through a penance that was just excruciating to watch. I mean, his son had died in World War II, and he pushed his son into it. You know, and he, you know, anyone who doesn't sign up for the war is a coward. And he's put, and then his son, his son becomes a war hero and dies. And then he had guilt about that. And then he had guilt about what he had to do to be a top boss of Los Angeles. You know, sure. and, and to be on the board of some 30 corporations or whatever it was. I think it was 30, maybe even more. But to be a leader like that, you know, there was a price to pay. And I found, I found recently, and, it's, and I have it, actually, uh, Morals and Dogma, his personal copy. <laughs> 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 you know? and, uh, but, uh, but yes, I saw him suffer for what he had done, and he gave away, like, uh, pretty much almost everything he had made. People think he, he, there, there's some fortune somewhere. There's no fortune. He gave it away to allay the guilt and then finally had a deathbed um, confession and all that with uh, all these priests around. And I happened to be there just outside the room in the hospital when he died. And uh, it, I wish I had been able to be there. The priest pushed us out. Yeah. You know, which well, they don't want you to see what the, the things that go on. They don't. They, they didn't they don't want me want to hear. Thing. They didn't want me to hear what he said. Yeah, they were afraid. They didn't want a, a witness to to get the story out of of what he's confessing to. I have a I have an idea. There's this long list of people that are dead. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know what what it takes. You know, to run a city and to run a. You know what I mean? And he also yeah. did a lot of good things. But I mean, the point of it is, I did see that that even he, but he had a tremendous amount of suffering. Not more suffering than you or I have had, or others I know. He had, he didn't suffer more than us, but he came from a high place. And he was brought very low, and then he was actually at the end of his life mocked. 
mm-hmm. cast aside, laughed at, considered an idiot. All yeah. those kinds of things, suffering at the behest of these evil women that were around that just wanted his money, you know. And, uh, oh, boy, I tell you. The, the good thing is, though, the great thing is that in this case, it worked towards repentance. You see, so many people, and you, and I know you know them, and I know them, that they think, well, I'll deal with God later, you know, but when I'm on my deathbed, when that happens. But, and, and, and I've seen so many, they use the parable of the laborers, you know, well, you know, the people late came late to the harvest, and they got the full, but the problem is, is those pe- late laborers, they came because the Lord went out to seek them. Yeah, There's he, nothing in the Scripture that says we seek the Lord. He didn't really do that. The Lord seeks us. Yeah, he didn't do that. He didn't conf- He he held the secrets to the end, but he he was in penance and suffering mm-hmm. and gave up it's his. Because the Lord reached out to him yeah. and sought him, and and overcame all those those obstacles yeah. in the way, which he does. And he did he cast them aside. <laughs> like a good mason, he did try to balance it out through good works. But see, I saw directly that that didn't work. Yes. He tried to balance it. Out. He tried to balance it out by good works, and and it, he just suffered horribly for thirty years. I mean, horribly. Just like it, it almost would have been more humane for him to have died. And and you know, um, and and any amount of gifts they gave to the poor and all that, and he really did a lot of that. Did not do one thing. The only thing that worked in the end was just. And then he had you know false priests, priests, corrupt priests around mm-hmm. the deathbed. But he still got, it didn't matter if they were false, he still got his confession out. He still got his, I'm a sinner, help me. I'm, into your hands, Jesus Christ, I commit my spirit, and I've, I believe you, I'm sorry, and all that. He did have that. But I mean, I'm just saying that it wasn't like at the last minute he repented. He, um, you know, and this is true with a lot of, uh, say, a lot of powerful men that suddenly something happens, they get a stroke. Okay, something like that, mm-hmm. and the wife can't wait to push him off the cliff and get you know and get, oh, yeah. get the money and get a new yeah. husband uh, or a new sure. or whatever you know. And I and I saw that happen to him, and I just was like, oh my goodness, this is so terrible. But you can repeat that from from him. You can repeat that uh, uh, you know across the board. And most of the uh, the men were not as good as him in terms of you know having a semblance, you know, having some moral character. It's just that you know he mm-hmm. when he was young. I think what bothered him, and, and maybe this is maybe there's somebody tuning in here that, that maybe needs some wisdom. What bothered him when he was young, when he was 18, was that he was poor. Yeah. And that drove yeah. him to do whatever yeah. it took to never be poor again. And that, and okay, so that's where that led. My, my father has a lot of that in him. He was a child of depression. Right. But, uh, the suffering that, that your grandfather did, though, that, that, that just witnesses that he was a lamb. You know, no, no one suffers so greatly as a lamb outside the fold. Yeah, he They're just couldn't, in terror, he couldn't forgive always himself. Always looking. Yeah. He couldn't forgive himself for his son's death, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. and, but, but boy, was he patriotic, you know. Yeah. He was. But you know, Jeff, we all suffer from that. The hardest person in the world to forgive is yourself. That's true of all of us, because, you know, lambs expect more of themselves than they expect out of anybody else. But, but the thing is, is that the, how society turned on him as a, how he was considered by the Satanists around as weak for having feelings of remorse. Yes. That was considered a great weakness. And I consider that the, his saving grace. <laughs> it was. It was his saving grace and strength. That's what it was. It's exactly what it was. Uh, yeah, they, uh, but, they know, have a different definition of strength and weakness uh, yeah. than we do. Yeah, it's a Machiavellian thing, you know. Um, you know, Totally, <laughs> totally. Machiavellian, Sun Tzu, all of those guys are right up their alley. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we've, we've gone through this, so I suppose uh, let me just speak to you out there who heard this, who are tuning in from Los Angeles. That's fine. Tune in from Los Angeles. You've, you've been doing that. You, you, private eyes are watching me. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, go ahead and watch. Watch all you like, but why don't you hear? Why don't you open your ears now? Yes. And yes. understand, you must repent. Just, there's yes, no, Lord. no, we all have to. If we want to live as eternal beings and, you know, get back to, well, some of you never, there is no getting back to. You're, you're kind of like here now. I, it's, it's, it's like, there's kind of a multifaceted thing going on here, but you're, there is no life without Jesus Christ. 
There, there is no Jesus in your life without repentance, and that means changing your direction. And that might mean changing jobs, changing it what might be changing your whole life. Yeah, yeah. Well, in many cases, it does because the people at work will consider you crazy. Some of you, your families, you young people who are tuning in, it will mean that your maybe your parents will try to lock you up in a, in an insane asylum. It uh, may. I've seen that it over and over again. Man. I've seen that a lot, by the way. But you know, basically, the asylum's not that big a deal. All you got to do is play the game. <laughs> You know? Yeah, give them the answers they want. Just tell them what they want to hear, and 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 you'll get off. Just you'll get out of there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like going to college. <laughs> it's kind of like going to prison, <laughs> but it's yeah. But it's more in secret when they uh, when they want to uh, do bad things to you. But look, no, don't worry about that. Just like, don't be afraid of anything. Remember that the Lord God is the power uh, Almighty, and He protects His lambs. And now you have the benefit of being in this time. The Lord protects his lambs. He's the one that brings in the planet X or the Nibiru, whatever. He's the one that moves the stars around. He's the one that brings the earthquakes. That you, that you may say, look what they did with those chemtrails. He's the one that, that has control over all that. Yes, he does. And, and if we trust and we lean on him and we walk with him, his strength is on us. His power is within us and his shield will cover us. And we need not worry. fear. Fear is the wedge that Satan uses to try and get a, get a hold of us. There's That's no right. fear in, lo- in, in the Lord. There's no fear in love. That's right. And ultimately, it doesn't look like love on the surface, but when you get into it, you realize that he is the true love, and what we have here is hate. We call love hate and hate love. We have it backwards. Everything it's a whole new world, Zeph. It's a whole different vision of what life is all about yeah. uh, when you meet the Lord. It just... It, it can't help but change you. It just, it just, it just can't help it. Amen. Well, I can't keep you anymore. I know that you have uh, a divine appointment with with uh, the truck, and you, yeah, mu- and you yeah, must. I've got to get ready to pick up my load. <laughs> you got to go. You got to do that, and uh, and then I, I pray that uh, that all the if anyone follows you that they get convicted of the Holy Spirit and slain by the Holy Spirit so that they may change. For good. I watched one of them the other night. He was, I was coming home. It was still daylight, which is rare these days. And he was following me, and I could watch him. He was like 30 feet behind me, and I go slower than a lot of people. Just yeah. So he was. it was on purpose that he was behind me, and he was like 20 to 30 miles. And then all of a sudden, as I was watching him, it's like he shook his head like, what am I doing? And all of a sudden, he buzzed out and went around me. <laughs> it was almost like his mind yeah. was not even occupied, you know? They no. were just forcing uh, him to be there. Yeah. It, it's. I love to bust them up when they're like in the in the workplace 